today is Pastor Al, First Baptist Church of Bernalillo, and let's get into our word with Pastor Al. Uh, this past Sunday, we were we started a series using the, uh, we're still in the book of Revelation, but we we're talking about the seven letters of Revelation. And I stated this was, uh, these letters were love letters from the Lord because we know that the Lord loves his bride, amen. He's writing a letter to the churches to help them understand where they're at and what he sees and you know remember he's the the high priest and he's our high priest and he's in the holy place and he's taking care of the lamps to make sure that his light is shining as bright as it can and that light is through us uh the church as well as the individuals of the church and i i want us to look at some words this week that will help us uh to understand a little more about what i was saying uh, Jesus did, uh, he commanded the church. We've talked about the church in Ephesus, uh, the apostolic church. Uh, but he, he said it, it, that in one area, in my, my message in point one, one of the things that he did, he was accommodating them about how they worked and how they did things according to his commandments and how they did uh, test those that claimed to be apostles that were not. And they did the work. Uh, but one of the things that came out was that they restrained from the evil one uh, and the evil that was going on in the world. Uh, and that's uh, our word today is restraint. And my verse for today is J uh, James 4, verse 7. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. All through scripture, especially when uh, we see Jesus dealing with uh, Satan there in the wilderness, he used scripture and he restrained from the things that Satan was trying to get him to do, right? And what happened after, you know, I, I'm a big baseball fan. Strike three, he was out. Satan left him. He left him alone for a season. But I want to go back to the Garden of Eden and understand that had Eve shown a little restraint, and Adam for that matter, because he was right there, um, I believe things would be a lot different today, amen? We'd still be in the Garden of Eden. We'd be... Uh, doing things, having time with the Lord, and just uh, it'd be an awesome time. But because Eve, Adam and Eve, did not show restraint from the evil one or Satan, um, they were drug into or lured to the things of the, the world. And, you know, we're tempted in three areas. That is our flesh and the world and then Satan. Uh, and those things that we have to you know, restrain ourselves from, uh, we have to make sure that we're being diligent about that. It's work. It's hard work to do. I'm not going to say it's not. I mean, the, the, you know, we're tempted around every turn. Uh, and Jesus was tempted himself. And, uh, but I believe that through a few verses today, I want to try to challenge us to see some of the, uh, the benefits and yet also some of the recourses that, that happen if we do not restrain especially those that have never accepted Jesus as their savior. Um, we should restrain from every form of evil, uh, you know, not just the big things. Nah, you know, we've got those big things that we, we hang up on a wall and say, these are the things that we just need to leave alone. Uh, but it says in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from every form of evil. If it doesn't glorify God, that's just kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, you can you can mark it down. Just kind of leave it alone. And, you know, it's my old saying, when in doubt, do without. Uh, but we need to, uh, you know, restrain ourselves from every form of evil. Um, we should also, uh, I forgot my mouse today. Our restraint should be uh, coupled with the fear of God. When we think about the things as we go through life, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't do certain things because I knew my dad would give me a whooping or I would lose something or I'd be punished of some sort of way, shape, or form. But um, I believe the same thing with, is, is with God. You know, the, the, the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. And that's not a fear as is like I was with my dad and a whooping. You know, I, we should fear the chastisement. If we're his child, he's going to chastise us. If, if we openly uh, commit sin, uh, but I believe that if we will go through life wanting to respect who God is and why he has said those things, in Matthew 10, verse 28, says, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. 
there are people in the world that are not afraid of God. They don't have a fear of God because they don't believe uh, and they don't have faith. And uh, But we need to live a life that shows that fear, that we're not going to do those things because I'm afraid. Well, one, I'm afraid that I'll, I'll sadden my Savior. And that's a big thing that I, you know, we talked about Sunday, our love. Do you love Jesus? I want him to know that I love him and I'm going to do everything. He says, you, Jesus said, you, they'll know you're my disciples if you keep my commandments and love one another. Uh, so how, how are you going to live? Um, well, let's say this. How, how you live will show your form of restraint. How you live your life will show what kind of restraint you have. Uh, when I was living haphazardly in my life, uh, when I was a sailor and things like that, I didn't worry too much and I didn't restrain myself. And I just, and I was a child of God and he, 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 he disciplined me and they, and they, I'm praise the Lord. He drawed me back and hallelujah. He, he's still using me. But in Galatians 6, 8, it says for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. I believe if, if we restrain from the flesh, we restrain from those things of the world, we're going to have a better understanding and a better uh, ability. The more you restrain uh, from the world, our flesh and those type things, the better off we are. And it gets to a point that it becomes second nature and that makes it so much easier. Uh, but, you know, we have to do things right because here's the thing. God is not uh, going to let it go. God is not going to, you know, he does show mercy. Uh, he done that by allowing his son to die for us and he gave us grace, but he will be just. God is just when we do not show restraint. Second Peter 2, 4 says, for if God did not spare angels when he, when they sinned, but cast them into hell and, uh, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, uh, you know, He's going to be fair if he'll take those angels that are that were in heaven and he he chained them up in heaven or in hell, uh, waiting for the judgment. And he's going to do the same thing for those that restrain or that do not restrain from the world in the ways of the devil. Um, and those who disregard God's commandments will be found guilty when they're judged. Just as like it said there in that verse, it says kept until the judgment. Revelation twenty one eight says, but as as for the cowardly and the faithless and the uh, Detestable as for murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake of the burn that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. After the judgment seat, the great white throne, the lake of fire will be there, and they'll be cast into that if they do not restrain from the ways of the evil one. So God's word will give us uh, and point us to the place of restraint of our heart. And that's where it's at. You see, even Eve, Adam and Eve, Eve sitting there said they, they looked at that fruit, fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they looked at it, they saw that it was one, good, good for food. It looked like it tastes good. And two, it would make them wise as unto gods. Uh, so they didn't restrain. They allowed the, the evil one to entice them and they didn't restrain from him. Uh, and they didn't think about the, that the father was going to be coming through and, and they were going to be talking to him. They didn't restrain from the, the, just the devil is so, he's so subtle. So be careful, but you got to watch your heart. You see, your heart is, is what you're going to go for. Your heart is what you're going to lean towards. And even in my life, there's things in life that I've had to really work hard to restrain from doing those things because it pleases my flesh or it pleases my desires, okay? So Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing in division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and the discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. See, if we want to restrain ourselves and do like the church in Ephesus, we have to know what God's word says. We know that it's alive. Jesus speaks through it. And he gives us that direction that we need to sow towards and that we follow. Uh, God's word also gives us the needful instructions according to God. Not what I think, not what the preacher thinks, not what whoever thinks, but what does God say about things? And the scripture is where we find that. Second Timothy 3.16, we all know that verse, all scripture 
is breathed by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for the training in righteousness. You want to stand and uh, restrain against the things of the devil? Know what God's word says. Remember, just what Jesus used when Satan tempted him there in the, uh, uh, the wilderness. And as we got to the end of the letter there to the church of Ephesus, he, uh, he said there would be a reward. He'd allow them to uh, eat of the tree of life. And uh, I look forward to that. But there's some other things that, you know, if we are able to conquer, in all seven of these letters, he, he wants us to conquer things. <clears throat> but he said, you know, if we're going to conquer because of the restraint we have of the world, he said he would give us a, an heritage in kingdom. In the kingdom, Revelation 3.21 says, The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Then Revelation 21.7, The one who conquers will have his heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Isn't that an awesome, awesome thought? I want to make my, my, my father smile. I want to make him happy. I want, I want to hear him say, I want to hear Jesus say there at the Bema seat, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because I'm willing to overcome, conquer, and, you know, stand against the devil and, and do my part to, to make sure I restrain myself from his wickedness. He's got, there's a reward for that. And you know what? Here's the thing. In ourselves, of ourselves, our flesh, and the way we live, uh, you can't do it by yourself. Um, I have found that without, you know, one, the word of God, but two, if we've already accepted Jesus as our Savior, the Holy Spirit lives within us. Within us. And Cheryl brought out some real good comments this morning in our, uh, our, our reading through the Bible. But one thing that I really enjoy is that if we become a sanctuary, the Lord lives within us. It's not just him putting his hand in us like a puppet. I've talked about the illustration of the Holy Spirit filling us to work like a glove. But I believe if we meet with the Lord in ourselves, uh, that sanctuary, and that we, um, when we're trying to restrain from the things of this world, the flesh, and the problems and the things that we're drawn to, to um, it's easy, and all you got to do is ask him. That's what's so awesome about all of this. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. We can listen for that still small voice. And we can just talk to it. First John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 says this, And this is the confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. If we're trying to restrain ourselves from the world, our flesh, Satan, and we ask him, Lord, I need help. I'm having a problem here. And he gives you scripture and He'll give you the, 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 you know, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He'll give us that way of escape that we'll be able to bear it. The, all the things that we look at in Scripture, and we can tie them into a string that makes a paragraph that gives us a hope that we can explain to others why we have such a hope. And the verse goes on, and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that he have, uh, that we have the request that we have asked him. He's going to do it. If you're doing it according to his will, you're trying to restrain, you need help against the devil, the world, just ask him. He'll help him. Back to our verse of the day. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You've got to go to God. You've got to listen to what he says. The great I am wants you to uh, be a light. That's why Jesus is in the lamps there in, in the, the holy place, and, and, and he's taking care of his church and the individuals within it. But we have to go to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So my attitude adjustment today is I will show restraint against my flesh, the world, and Satan. Because I love Jesus. Amen. Uh, if there's no better reason than to do it is to show your love to your Savior. He first loved you. He was willing to die for you that you might live. So let's restrain. Let's... Uh, Let's get our mind in the right place. And that leads us to our word tomorrow. We're going to talk about resolve. So you be back with me tomorrow. But let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Lord, I thank you for just the way you take care of us. And you've made a way that we can come to you. You've given us your, your scripture, your word. Uh, you've given us the Holy Spirit. You've given us a desire, uh, Lord, to do what is right. Help us to sow. 
to the Spirit, uh, that we might show the things of the Spirit, that we will show that we are the dwelling place of you, the great I Am. And I pray that you would help those that are listening today and myself, that as we go out into the world, the devil is always trying to uh, deceive us, to lure us, to do something that would ruin our testimony, that we could not be, that we, he doesn't want us to be able to be used by you. Lord, I'm asking uh, for myself and on behalf of those that are listening and for, you know, for our church, I pray that we would turn to you through your word, through that sanctuary that we can talk to you and share our innermost thoughts. Give us that which we need. Protect us when we need it. I pray that you'd put a hedge of protection around the, your children here at the church and those that listen faithfully here on this, this, uh, this web. And I pray, Lord, that you'd give us challenges in, in, in a way that we can prove our love for you and that we would not grow weary, that we would not faint, but that we would seek those uh, wings of eagles. Lord, I thank you so much for loving us the way you do. And we pray that you would keep us safe tonight and bring us back tomorrow. And we ask you for all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all be back with me tomorrow, okay? Love y'all. Take care.